In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up an Atlavox beacon, which is a solar powered mesh-tastic node that lets you send text messages without needing cell service or internet. So we'll go over what's in the box, how to attach the antennas, connecting to the free open source mesh-tastic app on your cell phone, radio and channel configuration, that way you can connect to other mesh-tastic radios. And we'll go over a number of different ways that you can mount the Atlavox beacon. Now, what comes in the box is gonna depend on how how you purchase the beacon. So on the website, you can see there are a number of different options that you can uh, customize for your beacon. So there are a number of different antenna options. This pigtail cable will be required to connect the enclosure to the antenna rail. So that's this wire right here. You can choose whether you want an internal Bluetooth antenna or an external Bluetooth antenna. And then there are some optional modules that we can install for you and some uh, optional mounting hardware depending on how you want to install it. Now, if you don't know anything about Meshtastic, it's an open source communication project that lets you send text messages using radios like this um, without needing any cell towers or internet. So it's peer to peer. It's not it doesn't require any centralized um, system or repeater to in order to work. So every radio acts as a repeater and you kind of create a mesh network that lets you send low bandwidth data like text messages, position data, stuff like that. So you would just download the free Meshtastic app on your phone. Um, you would pair it to the radio with Bluetooth. So this isn't like a walkie talkie where you like key the mic and talk into it. It doesn't do voice. It just does text messages. So this, once you have it on and paired to your phone, you can just kind of, you know, stow it away on your backpack or on your desk or something. And you would interface and communicate um, through your phone. So the phone will send the messages to the radio and then the radio will transmit it over um, just over the air um, to other Meshtastic radios in the area. Now, line of sight is key with Meshtastic. And so a product like this will enable you to deploy this outside in a very strategic location. So somewhere up high and kind of just leave it out there permanently. And you can have this act as just like a dedicated repeater to um, increase the reliability of your local mesh. Now you can also use this as a client device. If you wanna pair your phone directly to this and have it nearby at all times, you can um, interface with this radio just like you would uh, with a handheld radio. So depending on how you intend to use it will determine you know which uh, Bluetooth option you wanna go with. So most people opt for the external uh, Bluetooth antenna, but if you're just gonna be setting this up you know, remotely and just having it run 24 seven, I'd recommend just going with the internal Bluetooth antenna since you're not gonna be uh, connecting to it you know, locally with Bluetooth on a regular basis. All right, so in the box, there will be a top layer of foam that you can remove. And underneath, you'll see the Beacon Meshtastic guide. This is a QR code. So this QR code will bring you to the Beacon Getting Started page. It's basically gonna go over everything that we're reviewing in this video, if you want that for reference. You'll also see the default Bluetooth pin, which I'll show you how to change once, once we get connected. Um, one thing that's important to realize is you need to have the switch on in order to charge the device. So I'll go over that in a little bit as well. Every beacon will also have a custom label applied showing the name of the device, the firmware that was installed. So whenever an order comes in, we will flash the latest uh, stable firmware, Meshtastic firmware. Um, we're actually getting started on offering Mesh Core, which is a different project very similar to Meshtastic with some key differences. I'm learning more about Meshcore and we're going to be offering some official support for it um, shortly. But you can always, if you already know what Meshcore is, you can always flash it yourself or um, you can just leave a note in your order and I can flash it for you uh, just kind of manually. But we are um, in the process of getting kind of official mesh core support for the Beacon and the M1. And you'll see the date that the device was flashed and tested. So again, we flash and configure um, your Beacon basically immediately prior to shipping. So we have some custom software that I developed that helps us do that. 
uh, make sure any modules that you selected for the beacon are enabled and working correctly. Okay, so you can pull the beacon out of its uh, pocket here and underneath you will find all of the accessories that you purchased. So your LoRa antenna will be right here. This is the Alpha 7 inch antenna. We do offer this in 915 and 868. I think we're out of stock currently with the 868 but we'll get more in shortly. This is the 3 inch uh, Bluetooth antenna. We also offer the 7 inch Bluetooth antenna here. Uh, if you get this one that will be located uh, right here in this pocket. So the foam is kind of cut out custom for, you know, different scenarios depending on what is purchased. You'll have your USB cable. Um, and if you chose the Allen key, it'll either be in this bag or it'll be tucked in one of these pockets. Up here will be your cables. So these pigtail cables are what you're going to use to connect the enclosure to the antenna rail so you can mount your antennas. Mounting antennas is something you want to do before turning on the device. If you don't mount your LoRa antenna uh, prior to powering on, you will burn out, potentially burn out your radio. So you definitely don't want to do that. Now, as a precaution, we always ship these without setting the LoRa region, which prevents the radio from transmitting. Um, so just as a precaution in case you forget, but try to uh, connect the antenna prior to turning the device on. Another thing to keep in mind is the way, so we use a whiz block, a rack whiz block um, for the internals, which I can show you right here. So this is a rack 19007 whiz block. Um, this particular model has a GPS installed, which you can see here. So it's kind of cool as it's modular. You can always upgrade or add modules and um, experiment with different sensors and stuff like that. Uh, but the way the whiz block charge controller works is if there's solar power on the panel, it powers on the device. If you plug in a USB cable that has power, it powers on the device. So the power switch that we have here is really just a battery disconnect. That's all it is. You can see it's a very simple circuit. It disconnects the battery from the whiz block. So if you are powering the device from either USB or solar, it will still turn on. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and that's the reason why you need to have that battery disconnect switch turned on if you're trying to charge the battery, whether it's solar or USB. So just something to keep in mind. So to connect the antennas, there are some thumb screws on either side, each side of the antenna rail. So you're just gonna loosen those a little bit. That way you can slide the antenna rail up into position. So actually, just to show you how everything moves here. You've got the mounting plate on the back here that moves independently from the solar panel. You've got 180 degrees of uh, flexibility with the mounting plate and the antenna rail actually has 270 degrees of uh, rotation, you know, in relation to the mounting plate. So a lot of flexibility a lot of different um, mounting options with the beacon. And on the top of the enclosure, this is the cable gland that the solar panel uh, power is feeding into the enclosure. This is the LoRa SMA connector. And if you chose to use an external Bluetooth antenna, this is where you're gonna connect that. I have it labeled as BLE slash GPS because it's really, um, optional. So if you're using an internal Bluetooth antenna, that SMA pigtail that's internal to the enclosure now becomes available. So you could connect if you wanted to an external GPS antenna or use it for whatever you want. I also left space in between here. Uh, if there was any additional connection you wanted to make, there's some space here that you can drill and uh, mount additional SMA cables or whatever you want. So the pigtail cable that you're going to be connecting to the LoRa SMA connector is going to depend on which antenna you purchased. So most people will go with an N-type antenna like this. I also have a 12-inch uh, fiberglass antenna that I offer on the store. But there's also some SMA 
uh, LoRa antennas, so you would use the SMA cable to make this connection. So on the top of the antenna rail here, you can see there's a couple of different cutouts. So we have an N-type cutout here. There are two SMA cutouts here. You also have an SMA cut out on each side of the antenna rail as well. So if you're mounting any sort of antenna that has a 90 degree bend, you could mount that on the side if you wanted to. Now these four holes right here enable you to face mount an antenna using uh, the antenna mounting bracket that we offer as an option. So this is good for really long antennas. This is actually perfectly fine to mount, you know, in the actual, the regular end type hole. But if you're going, you know, any longer than this, 24 inches or something like that, 30 inches, I would recommend mounting like this just so you have a little more um, surface area uh, to the clamping portion of the mount. If you're going anything bigger than that, you're probably going to want to mount this separately from the beacon itself on a pole or something like that and then just connect the pigtail to the enclosure. So the N-type cable is a waterproof connector. We don't need the waterproof gasket in this situation, but you can leave it if you want to. It's no big deal. This just slips right into the hole and you put the tooth washer, the lock washer, and the nut. So you're just going to want to tighten that down and then you'll take the other end of the cable and connect it to the LoRa SMA connector. So these you can kind of just finger tight. They don't really need a lot of torque. And then you can connect the antenna. Now this might need a little bit of pressure to get the threads engaged and just be careful not to cross thread it. Um, you should be able to feel whether the threads are seated correctly or not. Now, if you got an internal Bluetooth antenna, this is all you need to do. You just wanna make sure the cap is on that Bluetooth connector that you're not using um, just so you know, if you ever want to use it in the future, it'll be available. So this is what the internal Bluetooth antenna looks like uh, with the plastic cap on here. I was able to test it to like 75 feet line of sight with an internal Bluetooth antenna. But again, you can always upgrade this. It's four screws. You pull this off. This cable will be in here even if you choose the internal uh, Bluetooth antenna. So you would just disconnect the cable right here and then connect this um, IPEX to SMA uh, pigtail, and then you'll be able to um, connect an external Bluetooth antenna. Just a side note, this is uh, actually an older prototype, so you'll notice the, uh, the, the cable locations are a little bit different, but um, I just had this on the desk here, figured I'd show you the, the inside of what this looks like. Now, if you did get an external Bluetooth antenna, you'll need this uh, SMA pigtail although you can just connect if you if you got like the the short three inch bluetooth antenna you could just connect that directly uh to this to this sma um, connector right there and then when it's deployed it'll kind of be on an angle which you know you're probably going to be below the the beacon anyway so that might work out for you but if you want to attach a bluetooth antenna to the antenna rail just pick which hole you want uh, to use, tighten the nut and connect it to the enclosure. Then your Bluetooth antenna will thread right on. Now that the antennas are connected, we can go ahead and turn it on. So you just press that button right there. You'll see a flash of a green light. Then you can download the free Meshtastic app, open it up and in the bottom, you'll see connect. Uh, Android's gonna look a little bit different. This is the iPhone version. So we're gonna tap it. We're gonna connect to new radio and it's asking for the Bluetooth code. So again, the code for the Bluetooth is on the paper in the box. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna show you how to change that. And the most important thing to start communicating is to set the lower region. So we'll tap that and we'll set that to United States. We'll tap save, then save configuration and it's gonna do an automatic reboot. So it should reconnect automatically and it recognizes that we now have the lower region set. So if this is just gonna be set up as a repeater, that's all you need to do. You can go ahead and deploy this and your beacon is good to go. But if you're gonna use this as a client or you're interested in a little introduction to the Meshtastic app, I'm gonna show you a couple of things that I recommend checking out. So on the bottom left is where your messages are. So when you purchase a radio from Atlavox, we're gonna set up a custom private 
channel in the primary channel slot. So channel zero here will say alpha. This is gonna be your private channel that all of your radio radios will have configured on it so you can communicate with um, all of the radios that you purchase from us and any radios you purchase in the future will have that um, channel saved for you and we'll set that up automatically. And what you see as channel one here is the public channel. So this is what is configured on everybody's device by default. So I will send a test message and we can see we've been acknowledged. And we just discovered a new node. Now, if I go to the nodes list, this is gonna show you all the nodes that your radio has discovered. Now be patient with this. Um, nodes by default have I think a half hour um, ping interval. So you might not see nodes right away. It's a little unintuitive. You know, we're so used to like online messaging where like if someone's online, you see immediately that they're online, but this is radio. So it, for it to ping every like two seconds, like here I am, here I am, here I am, it would take up a lot of bandwidth on the frequency. And so um, give it some time, give it like an hour or so. Um, but one thing you can do to try to speed that up is again, just sending a test message on the public channel to kind of see other nodes that are in your area. The mesh map will show you a location of uh, all the nodes that you've discovered if they have position enabled. So this is uh, at Lavox headquarters in Bristol. And we haven't discovered any additional nodes just yet, but this will slowly fill up with other nodes um, as we leave this on and it starts discovering the local mesh. Now there are four settings I wanna go over quickly. If you wanna change the name of your node, you can go to user and the long name uh, right here and the short name right here. The short name has to be four characters long. Anytime you change a setting, you have to tap save and um, most times it's gonna trigger an automatic reboot. So just keep that in mind. The Bluetooth pin is something you should definitely change as well. The default pin is one, two, three, four, five, six. It's easy to guess. It's out there publicly on the internet as the default pin. Um, that would enable anybody to connect to your device and change all of these settings. So you're gonna wanna overwrite this and obviously make sure you write it down so you know what it is. So as soon as you type that in and hit save, it's gonna reboot. And when you reconnect, you're gonna have to put in that new pin. Now position, uh, there's a few different options for position. So if you chose a GPS, um, it can use the internal GPS and we'll have that configured for you. But I think in most cases, if you're deploying a beacon um, in a fixed location, it's not really needed to have a GPS. You're gonna save a lot of uh, battery power by not having a GPS. So you can actually uh, set a fixed position right here and it can use your current uh, position from your phone, save that to the device, and that's the position it'll report um, when whenever position data is transferred. And the last setting I wanna show you real quick is how to disable the heartbeat LED that will appear on the bottom front of the device. If you don't want that blinking, you can go into device and then scroll down and you can disable it right here, just so you don't have that LED blinking all the time. And lastly, as far as mounting the beacon itself, you've got a number of different slots here. You can do a horizontal pole mount, vertical pole mount. I do offer some U-bolts on the website when you check out. Um, so if you're doing a pole mount, you'll wanna add those to your cart. There are four holes at each corner size for a quarter 20 bolt. So that's great for like a magnet mount if you're putting it on a vehicle or any sort of you know steel structure and some complementary smaller holes if you're gonna use screws to mount it to a wall or something like that. You can also roof mount this on like an asphalt shingle roof. There is a slot here so you can fasten with these top bolts here and then still be able to flash and waterproof um, those penetrations. These slots also work well for uh, strap mounting to a tree. And if you're strapping it to something really large, you can use a three inch strap to go across right here. All right, so that's how you set up an Atlavox beacon for Meshtastic. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you. If you'd like to purchase an Atlavox beacon, there'll be links below as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.